organizer for uh, inviting me to this uh, very nice workshop to uh, do string theory proper. Um, and so I will be telling you about uh, super strings in Raman Raman Flux background. Um, so, and I'm going to be working in, uh, this is based on the paper from last November with the uh, two students, uh, Min Jae Cho and Scott Collier. Um, uh, before anyone asks me about, you know, why we use uh, this formalism as opposed to, you know, pure spin or hybrid formalism, let me uh, first say that, in fact, our project started as an attempt to understand uh, string spectrum in ADS3 in the hybrid formalism. We failed to make any progress, and then we realized that we can actually do something with the good old NSR formalism, and that's what I will tell you about. Um, and in fact, uh, also initially, we did not um, uh, think about string field theory at all. In fact, uh, a little over a year ago, when I gave a very prelim preliminary version of, very, very preliminary version of this talk um, at Caltech in front of Hiroshi and John, um, there was no string field theory mentioned. Um, and as we're, as we're writing up the results, um, we recognize that um, uh, in order to um, uh, explain the logic clearly behind the calculation and in order to uh, resolve the various p uh, potential ambiguities involved, the natural language to speak of all of this is in fact a uh, closed super string field theory. So now I will present this um, uh, discussion in the, in the not, not in the order we, we did things um, in, in writing out this paper, but rather in what I think is the natural logic to understand um, the, the subject. So um, uh, I will, uh, let me first just uh, explain um, uh, what we want to do and uh, to, to get to the actual physical problem where we're interested in uh, addressing and then we'll talk about um, uh, string field theory. So, um, so we'll consider uh, type two uh, string uh, in uh, NSR formalism. Um, and uh, as is well known, we have some well sheet uh, super conformal field theory based on uh, BC beta gamma ghost and uh, X mu, psi mu, matter CFT um, with a BRT uh, symmetry. Um, now, uh, uh, the usually formulated for uh, type two strings in Mikowskian space time, uh, if you want to consider this in a general NS NS closed string background, um, uh, a weak coupling, we can um, simply say that. Um, uh, we, we, we seem to say that we'll deform um, the C equals uh, 15 matter, uh, matter CFT uh, to some uh, interacting matter CFT is still unitary uh, in, in this matter sector, so no big deal. Um, uh, so typically we do that by um, deforming the worksheet action, if you wish, by some NS NS uh, vertex operator in a zero picture. Um, uh, with the Raman Raman background, um, in general, uh, the uh, immediate uh, complaint or trouble with the NSR formalism is that um, the uh, Raman Raman vertex operator, uh, if you were to write down, that would describe some closed string background, Raman Raman closed string background. Uh, would have a picture number uh, that's a half integer um, and it doesn't seem to make sense to deform the worksheet action by some vertex operator half um, integer. Uh, now, now there's some naive way to, to try to address this, we'll, we'll discuss it in a second, um, but uh, just, to, uh, just to be clear, uh, you know, usually, I mean, the, it, the, the, the beta gamma system of the world sheet CFT in the NSR formalism is a really strange uh, beast. It doesn't really obey some of the standard axioms that we assume of uh, 2D conformal field theory. Um, for example, the beta gamma system uh, requires uh, thinking about the local operators of the form delta beta and delta gamma. Um, and uh, yet we're going to usually make some restriction on the Hilbert space um, uh, of the Bellagam system so such that if you apply the naive state operator mapping, the OPE does not close. Uh, but, you know, it's, uh, in, in some ways, in some sense, you know, 
quite non obvious that um, this uh, Washu CFT is in fact uh, somehow compatible with the unitarity of uh, uh, string scattering. Uh, but, but of course, that's a that's well known story. Um, uh, uh, the fundamental fields in the beta gamma system does not carry any picture number, whereas is, is this operator carry a picture number um, uh, plus one and minus one, respectively. And as as usual, one uh, often makes use of the uh, rebosonized description of beta gamma system in terms of the linear dilaton phi and a pair of um, fermions, uh, fermionic ghosts uh, C and eta. Um, uh, such that, um, uh, let's say, uh, this uh, delta beta is uh, e to the uh, phi, and delta gamma is e to the minus phi, and the picture number current is minus partial phi minus uh, eta c, um, uh, which is not to be confused with the beta gamma ghost number current, which is just minus partial phi. Um, and just to set, so set up the no notation, um, and uh, we usually speak of the picture changing operator, uh, let's say denoted by chi, uh, that's a holomorphic, an, an anti holomorphic picture changing operator. So this is the VRT uh, transformation of the C ghost. There's some standard expression uh, in terms of these um, fundamental fields. I, I won't bother writing them down for now. Um, it is um, a. a uh, a standard procedure um, uh, due to Friedan and Martinek Schenker um, that uh, you know, if you see a, let's say you, you see a Ramon, if you have a Ramon Ramon vertex operator um, in the usual, in the standard minus a half, minus a half picture, um, and if you have a fixed vertex operator of that sort, come with the CC tilde ghosts, uh, then you can apply. Uh, on these with a zero mode of the um, picture changing operator where the, the zero mode uh, as usually is defined to be uh, this, uh, the counter integral of one over z times chi of z acts on the operator at the origin uh, and you have the picture raised operator. Um, and um, there's, there's some naive sense in which if you can compute say some tree level scattering amplitude uh, of on shell vertex operators, BRC closed, then uh, you can move the picture changing operator around uh, without changing the, the amplitude. So, in some sense, one uh, wants to think of this picture raised operator as morally equivalent you know, to the unraised operator in some sense. Um, but uh, that statement is really, in some sense, only true up to BRC exact stuff. And uh, if you have to deal with uh, operators that are slightly off shell, it will become a problem. Um, so, you know, for instance, um, one might say that a, a naive attempt to uh, describe a uh, Ramon Ramon background uh, as a deformation of the Walsh theory in NSR formalism could be the following. So, uh, usually, if you have a NS, NS background, you can say that we deform the action or insert into, e, e to the, in, in, insert into the path integral by e to the minus some deformation of the action. Let's say it could be some integral of. Um, this NS, NS vertex operator and the zero, zero picture, the integrated vertex operator, um, then uh, you might, uh, a naive attempt would be say, to, to say that, well, let's do the same thing with the Ramon, Ramon vertex operator, except that whenever we see a, a, a pair of minus one half vertex operators, we'll raise the picture on one of them to turn it into plus a half. Uh, if you naively do that, uh, you take e to the minus the integral of the uh, R vertex operator and expand it out. Um, and uh, or you only want to keep even number of R vertex operating insertion, you would write something like this, uh, where here you in integrate O R R minus a half minus a half, and here you integrate O R R plus a half plus a half. Um, in fact, this um, uh, kind of sorry. Uh, uh, well, uh, good question. You can you can try, um, and uh, this is the kind of things that was uh, proposed by uh, Bernstein and Lee back in '99, and uh, it seems to at least it seems to make sense at least to leading order uh, in the deformation, leading, leading non-trivial order in deformation. In fact, to order 
uh, square, second order in our fields, um, and uh, uh, they observe something very nice. So they, they recognize that if you just consider the masses background fields, um, then generically, the, um, in the, if you have a pair of RR vertex over insertion, um, uh, they can be uh, log divergences from um, uh, integrating the OPE of a pair of R vertex servers as it collides, and in order to cancel that divergence, you have to insert an in NS vertex operator that's slightly off shell, um, and uh, that precisely reproduces uh, the part of the supergravity, space time supergravity equation in motion that is quadratic in, in our fields. Um, so clearly, this uh, seems to make sense, um, but if you think about um, trying to do this in general, it's, um, it's quite confusing because. Uh, um, uh, so, uh, indeed, as I was just, just asked, uh, you know, the, this assignment of the picture is rather arbitrary, and uh, uh, it, beyond leading order in the deformation, uh, these vertex operators have to be taken slightly off shell. I'll discuss that very explicitly uh, in a moment. Um, and if, the, if these operators are off shell, then you are not allowed to move the picture changing operator around. It's, it's going to change the answer. Uh, so, um, so, it's not necessarily a natural uh, prescription. And you also have to, you indeed have to worry about various divergences as these vertex operators collide, and it's not obvious how to regularize all of that in a consistent manner. Um, so, uh, and um, uh, the upshot is going to be that, uh, um, well, okay, so, uh, you know, it's, to me, it's still possible that this might, this such a pres consistent pres prescription might exist. Uh, it would look like some kind of um, non-local deformation on the world sheets because this thing cannot really be expressed as the exponential of the integral of a local vertex operator. Um, uh, it, in some sense, it should be sort of local up to BRC exact stuff, but the question is how do you really make, make that precise? Um, but uh, uh, instead of trying to think about the deforming the world sheet CFT, uh, in the string field theory language I will discuss in a moment, um, the philosophy is somehow the opposite. We fix the CFT, we fix the string fields that states in the full Hilbert space of world sheet CFT of the original undeformed theory, in whatever background you choose to start with, pure NSNS -NS background, and then the deformation will be entirely described by turning on non-trivial string fields as opposed to deforming the CFT. And at least in this approach, the logic is much cleaner. You don't have to invent anything new. You know, the, the formalism has already been, been set up by now, and uh, um, things will, 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 will follow through, and something like this will, will, will come out, um, but um, in a more uh, precise manner. Um, before getting to that, I want to just um, uh, describe the actual physical problem that we're uh, interested in uh, addressing. So, so we you know the, the goal to, 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 to be shooting for. So the example um, of interest um, is uh, strings in ADS3. Uh, string, so type 2 string uh, in uh, the well-known background, ADS3 times S3 times M4, where M4 is either T4 or K3. Uh, the details of the M4 will not be of very much concern uh, for this discussion. Um, so uh, this thing will have some radius R, um, and uh, 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 you know, it's, uh, one can write a supergravity solution for, for this, of course, with, the, with NS and Ramon Ramon flux. So typically, um, solution would involve um, uh, some NS, NS uh, H3 flux, uh, which is, uh, let's say, goes like some Q times R squared omega ADS3 plus omega S3. These are well informed some uh, uh, ADS3 and S3 unit, uh, norm, or unit normalization. And then the Ramon Ramon flux will go like a square root of 1 minus Q, little Q squared, radius squared. And the same thing, uh, where little q is a parameter um, that uh, I'll write in the form of 1 minus mu squared over 2. Um, so if little q, if mu equal to 0, is a pure NSNS -NS background. If uh, mu is non-zero, then you have some Raman Raman flux. Uh, so the Raman Raman flux is proportional to, to mu in my, in my convention here. Um, uh, now, uh, of course, in the full number theory string theory, these are uh, both the NS NS flux and the Raman Raman flux are quantized, but that quantization is only, uh, but in string perturbation theory, the quantization is only visible in the NSN, for the NS NS flux. So I, I'm going to be considering strings that we're coupling in this talk, so I will only be concerned about, um, so the quantization, only the quantization of um, H3 is, is manifest. Um, 
And uh, in that case, I can write R squared to be alpha prime k over 1 minus uh, mu squared over 2 simply by demanding that h flux is you know, uh, proportional to, to k, the level of the, um, well, in the pure NS, NS point, k will be the level of the W0 model. In general, k will just be some integer that's the NS NS flux. Um, OK, so that's the, the family of the string background I'll be interested in. And uh, the question I'll be asking is, what is this, uh, how do we compute the spectrum of the fundamental strings um, in the background when uh, mu is non-zero? Uh, of course, this, uh, the, 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 the case of the pure NS, NS background was understood by Hiroshi and Huang uh, some time ago. Um, so uh, uh, this is kind of a nice setup for studying um, the wrong wrong background is a deformation uh, because uh, unlike the case of ADS5 times S5, um, which you might think of as, as the most standard example, in that case, in order to have a wrong wrong background, you have to deform from, from flat space. And that's, uh, uh, in some sense, a much more drastic deformation. Um, in, in this case, we can start with ADS times S already uh, and pure NS NS background and then turn Ramon Ramon flux. And for very precise reasons, uh, you'll see that, uh, in fact, it's, it's a less drastic deformation and things are under actually better control. Um, uh, so I'm going to be working uh, with uh, uh, an ex I'll view this deformation as expansion in mu. Uh, I'll be working at finite radius, so finite k, finite level k. But, but, the defer but, but indeed, I'll treat the remark on deformation per perturbability, and the, only, the actual result I'm going to tell you about is the leading non-trivial order result, which is order mu, mu squared. Uh, but but at, at finite k. Um, OK, so uh, now, um, uh, as is well known, in the, the, the fundamental string states in ADS3, um, well, there are a different kind of fundamental string st states. Uh, in, the NS, in the pure NSNS background, there are the so-called short strings and long strings. Uh, the short strings, and they kind of look like this. In the space-time diagram, there's some kind of oscillating string local near the center of ADS. Uh, and the long strings uh, look like this. Uh, they, they kind of come in and then ex they kind of reflect back, back out to infinity. Um, uh, once you turn on the Ramon Ramon flux, this uh, uh, distinction between short and long strings is supposed to be non existent. So this is supposed to become the, well, the, the, there will be no sharp distinction between short and, and long strings. Um, uh, now, uh, it's an interesting question to, to understand the correction to the spectrum of both. So in the case of pure NS, NS background, you have a continuum of long strings, which is supposed to become discrete in the Ramon-Ramon background. I will not tell you how that goes. Um, uh, it, you know, presumably, one, one can study that, but it requires a little more sophisticated calculation than the one we did. I'm just going to study the, the, the actual the explicit results I'll tell you about is just for the short string, and we'll be considering some pulsating string um, uh, in, um, in, in ADS3. Um, the orbital CFT, the orbital CFT sits in a very different point in the modular space of the space-time CFT duo to this ADS3 times S3. Uh, it's uh, um, it, it's finite distance, uh, finite you know, uh, distance away from uh, uh, the the points of the modular space uh, where the CFT is described by uh, is dual to this um, pure NS NS background. The pure NS NS background is uh, dual to a CFT that is. Uh, slightly singular from the standard point of view because the spectrum becomes um, turned into a continuum, a part of the spectrum turned into a continuum ab above a gap. Um, and uh, uh, it, it has to do with, I mean, you can try to approach that point starting from orbital of CFT by turning on the twist field uh, and with scars one module live on the circle, you go halfway around the circle, you can get to this, uh, uh, this singular point, but, but it uh, not, has not been easy to uh, directly probe that um, uh, that, that CFT. So, so, um, uh, so everything I'm going to tell you is going to be from the worksheet, nothing from the Savannah Sims. We have a proposal for mu equal to 0 and k equal to 1. Right? OK. And there, so that's the pure NSMS background. We can do the spectrum. But as you see, tomorrow, the proposal is going to do some question marks. So it seems to be very small. 
Uh, yeah, we, we can certainly discuss that later, but I don't think uh, that, that's kind of autonomous to what I'm going to talk about. Uh, well, we'll start from equal zero, but generic k greater than one and what we'll form? Uh, well, yes. Yes, it has a continuous spectrum, but as I mentioned, I'm not going to address the, I'm not going to address the continuous part of the spectrum. Uh, I'm going to only address the discrete part of the spectrum. <laughs> Uh, we, we, we can, we, uh, no, no. Uh, uh, we can discuss that, but it doesn't have much to do with what I'm, what I'm going to say explicitly, so, so let me. Uh, 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 in fact, I, here I just meant to sketch the problem. The, the, uh, most of the time I'm going to spend is, is about the, the, the string field formalism. Uh, at the end of the day, the, the, the detailed computation of this is a, is a standard um, integration of a CFD correlator, which, which I'll, I'll come to at, at the end. Um, okay, so um, <laughs> is this the eraser? Um, okay, so uh, the closed super, I don't know the standard abbreviation, super string field theory um, uh, based on NSR formalism. Uh, uh, so we have a string field, which is, lives in, uh, so this, the string field, uh, psi, lives in um, a space I call H0. Uh, this is, uh, so the, the, this, this is defined as a space of the, you start with a full Hilbert space um, uh, of the Walsh CFT. Well, uh, Hilbert space is a misnomer because we have a slightly non-conventional norm, but I will not worry about such uh, 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 terminology issues. Um, uh, so uh, we start with the full Hilbert space of the Walsh CFT, including all the ghosts. Um, we restrict to uh, the space with picture number minus one in the NS sector and minus a half in the R sector on either the holomorphic or anti-holomorphic sides, um, and further uh, subject to uh, the constraint that uh, the string field is annihilated by B0 minus B0 tilde and, and also has spin zero. So annihilated by L0 minus L0 tilde. Um, uh, I want to emphasize that this is as well known in closed string field theory, this is understood, so should be thought of as a uh, essential constraint in the definition of string field, which should not to be confused with the Siegel condition. That is, uh, the Siegel gauge condition, which I'm not imposing so far, is um, uh, uh, going to be used as a kind of a, sort of a gauge fixing condition in the context of the BV action. But I will not actually use the BV action. I will only going to be working with, um, it was, for my purpose, it will suffice to be working with the equation motion. It will save me some, some writing. Um, uh, this condition, uh, I will not have the time to really motivate in, in detail, come from essentially demanding the correct factorization of off shell uh, amplitudes. Um, so, an off shell amplitude. Uh, of the string fields uh, is uh, schematically defined uh, to be the following. So if you have n string fields generically off shell um, uh, in the sense of that they don't abide the linearized equation of motion, uh, then uh, 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 the off shell amplitude, so usually if you have on shell amplitude, these phi's will be some BRT closed vertex operators. Uh, now they just will be taken off shell and include many more possible components. Uh, if you're talking about on shell amplitude, we usually have some kind of moduli space integrand, uh, which is some differential form that lives in some appropriate space, which I'll describe in a second. Let's say I call it omega. Uh, and then we'll inter in integrate this over some appropriate space uh, called Sn. Uh, so what is, what is the form omega and what is the space we're integrating over? Um, well, uh, so um, we're not going to be integrating over the modular space itself um, because when the string fields are off-shell, that will not be a well-defined thing. Um, so what we need to do is the following. So we have started with uh, all th this entire talk will be restricted to a tree level. So we'll be talking about classical string field theory. Uh, much of the discussion it can poten potentially be generalized to so quantum case as well, but I will only be working with the classical string field theory. Um, so uh, you start with a modular space of a sphere with n punctures. Uh, M. Uh, there's a vibration over that. Uh, this space I'll call, I'll call P0N. Um, this is the space of uh, uh, the sphere with uh, 
So we have these, uh, some vertex operator insertion, V1, V2, Vn. So each one corresponds to some puncture of, uh, uh, that could be either Ns or R. Uh, around each uh, insertion vertex operator, we'll pick a local coordinate system. Uh, let's say, uh, call it W1, W2, W3, et cetera, uh, with some uh, transition map. So let's say there's some coordinate Z on the sphere. Um, Z uh, equal, equals Fi, Wi uh, on the um, uh, boundary of these uh, disks that surrounds, uh, that, that contains each of these vertex operator insertion. Um, so uh, P0n is uh, the moduli space of uh, the n puncture sphere together with the data labeling these transition maps Fi, or in equivalently with the data of the choice of local coordinate system uh, up to a constant phase rotation on each disk. Uh, that uh, statement of up to constant rotation has to do with the, the, the spin, the, all these uh, string fields have uh, spin zero by, con by, by definition. Um, but that's not enough for doing, uh, so this, this will be enough for doing uh, bosonic uh, closed string field theory. To do super closed string field theory, you need to consider a, a further uh, uh, vibration over this, uh, which uh, in this P tilde, which also in includes appropriate insertion of picture changing operators. So you have some, uh, possibly you need some PCOs depending on the picture number, depending on how many vertex operators you're, you're inserting. Uh, so P tilde n is the P tilde n together with the choice of the position of the PCOs. Um, and um, to define the offshore amplitude, we can choose a section, Sn, and we'll not distinguish the, the map from the, the actual locus. So uh, this uh, form will be uh, this appropriate integrand, which is some differential form on this P tilde space uh, will be integrated um, over uh, this section, Sn. Uh, it's infinite dimensional. Uh, yeah, but, but, but Sn, of course, is, has a, well, Sn will have the same dimension as the modulus space. So, so this, uh, in fact, if, if, if the size are BRT closed operator, this will reduce the usual thing. Um, okay, so um, there's some standard uh, form of omega in, 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 in uh, due to lack of time. I won't write it explicitly. I just want to uh, say that uh, this as differential form involves, you know, indices both in the modulus space direction as well as in, in the fi fiber direction. And uh, 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 that's, that's important for, for the consistency of the story, but uh, I, I, will, I will not write this omega in detail. It's a, it's a standard thing with the PCOs and the Beagles insertion and all that. Yes, that's the definition. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so that's the, the definition, and you will always insert the appropriate patient operators to make up for the correct total picture number. That, that's, uh, and of course, it's, it's not trivial to. Uh, well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a non-trivial exercise to to demonstrate that this obeys the co correct factorization fact criteria. You also have to make um, suitable uh, restrictions on how SM behave uh, near the boundary of the modular space. For the, but but that, that's that's all has been uh, understood. Um, so, um, now, uh, uh, so that's the offshore amplitude. Now, in order to uh, write the uh, string field equations, um, one would like to work with sort of the 1PI versions of that. So, for example, if you have a four point uh, tree amplitude um, of string fields, we'd like to decompose that in terms of the 1PI amplitudes, um, uh, 1PI versus. So I'll, this uh, uh, in, in, in a standard way. Um, and um, I notice that, of course, there's, there's some huge amount of ambiguity in, in, in the choice of this SN despite the kind of con consistent condition that I, I mentioned. Um, and that ambiguity has to, is tied to uh, field redefinition ambiguities of the string field. Um, it's a complication that one has to live, live with in order to resolve the various divergences that one would otherwise encounter in string perturbation theory. Um, so, um, the, uh, this bracket, uh, phi 1 through phi n, will be defined to be the 1pi part, uh, the, the 1pi part of this uh, offshore amplitude. Um, now, um, there is a, a useful alternative way to view this uh, string field bracket. Uh, instead of thinking of this in terms of 1pi part of this um, amplitude, um, I can also uh, think of this uh, in terms of, uh, rather than integrating this form omega over this section uh, that, you know, that covers the entire modular space, 
um, we can integrate this over uh, sort of a domain within a section, which is usually known as a string vertex, uh, that covers a part um, who, that projects down to a part of the modular space. Uh, for example, um, in the case of uh, uh, in the case of the sphere four point uh, offshore amplitude, one can uh, choose to. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, correct, correct, correct. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, I'll just make this slightly more explicit um, by, by outlining the, in, you know, in the case of the, the sphere full point, uh, so of course the, 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 what's specified the stream vertex or the section SN is more than just a modular space, as I said, this, this infinite dimensional fiber, but uh, let's, if we just focus on, the, on, on, the, on the, its projection onto the modular space, uh, you could cons think of the following picture. So there are the special points, the cross ratio of the four points, one, zero, and infinity, uh, in which and they, those limits, they correspond to, you know, these three kind of diagrams. So um, you would like to say that, uh, you know, for example, if you want to know what is the four point chord extreme vertex, uh, it's uh, t typically going to be some domain like over here. Uh, th th this corresponds to this four point Vertex, whereas the, the integration over over the rest uh, corresponds to the other kind of Feynman diagrams, that, like so. Uh, and th there's some uh, th there's plenty of freedom in, in how to arrange this in, in some consistent way. Uh, one of the nice ways to to do this was uh, pr uh, formulated by uh, very nice elegantly by Barton Wiebach in the early 90s based on minimal area surfaces, but uh, none of that will be uh, relevant to the explicit computation I'm going to do for reasons uh, that will become clear uh, in a moment. Um, uh, sorry, uh, what's the question? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, the, the, this is a, a grossly simplified picture. In general, yes, you have to worry about the, 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 the fiber, of course. So, so you have to make appropriate choice. Well, we are, we are yes, 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 yeah, yes. This is just a sketch of the intuition, but, but it's not the full story. Um, um, okay. Uh, so uh, anyway, the, the point of introducing this is that I need to write this uh, um, uh, in, term, in, in the following, following way. Uh, so I'll int uh, write this uh, uh, square bracket of, uh, in this case, n minus one string fields phi two through, through phi n as a uh, as a as a state in the CFT Hilbert space, which is a new string field uh, that is defined by this property uh, that uh, it's uh, appropriate in the product in the appropriate sense with phi with psi one. This is the B B P Z conjugate, by the way, uh, not to be confused with Hermitian conjugation. Uh, this is going to be equal to that. So, so basically, this bracket is some kind of uh, uh, some way to fuse this uh, n minus one uh, string fields. By the way, of course, I learned all of these from Asher's papers, so, and all of these have been uh, well formulated. Um, um, uh, by, by construction, yes, yes. Um, okay, uh, so. Uh, the equation of motion uh, uh, we're going to be working with takes the following form. Uh, so this is why I introduced that bracket. This is going to enter the equation of motion. Um, uh, where this G here, uh, G is just uh, one on NS sector state uh, string field, or uh, the picture, picture raising. Uh, on a R sector string field on either left or right. That, that's the definition. Um, the, the one can write action for this, but I will not discuss the actions for the lack of time. It also will not be necessary for my discussion. Um, I better hurry, I mean, actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, the uh, a string. Uh, non-trivial closing background will be size zero, 
uh, you know, by set zero be some solution to this equation of motion. And it was the, the, the problem with computing the string spectrum is a problem of studying uh, linearized fluctuations. Okay, so we can, uh, of course, uh, just expand this equation around, around uh, psi zero. We have some linearized equations for uh, the fluctuation uh, psi hat, like so. Um, and so the, the, the problem with finding a spectrum is basically the question of studying um, the solution to this equation of modular gauge transformations. Um, so now, uh, uh, if you have an R deformation, uh, it's basically described by a string field, psi zero, uh, this background string field, uh, which will study perturbatively. So remember there was this deformation parameter mu, so there'll be, it'll look like mu, some uh, called VR1, the minus a half picture, plus mu squared, uh, and next, at the square order, it will be some NS string field, we call this VNS2, for second order, and so forth. So this VR1 is going to be a standard thing. Just by a first order mu equation of motion, it has to be on shell. So this has to be um, some on shell vertex operator, like so. So this ORR is on shell. Um, um, uh, this guy here is going to be of the form C C tilde e to the minus phi e to the minus phi tilde O NS NS uh, plus higher weight stuff that involve other generally more complicated ghost structures. Uh, uh, and uh, this generally will be off shell already, uh, but not just uh, uh, in, in, in addition to having some you know, up, uh, component like, like this, where ONS and NS, NS some off shell, um, but super component primary, there will be some high, higher weight stuff in, in all various combinations of, of ghosts. No, not necessarily massless, but, but I, I will consider only massless in, the, in this discussion. It doesn't have to be massless. Um, uh, so, uh, at uh, order mu squared, uh, the, the part of the equation motion that will dictate what NS, this NS2 is, is basically going to look like this. Uh, so, I can uh, write uh, in the ADS3 uh, case what, what these things look like. So by the way, the, so you, one can try to then, then solve this VNS2. Basically, I'll, I'll use a graphic notation to save time. Uh, this VNS2, but you can think of it as having the run run source, and then you produce some string field, and then you kind of you invert, you try to solve this equation, you, you put in some propagator, and you produce this VNS2. Uh, this is just a graphic notation to 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 kind of illustrate the the, the logic here. Um, so explicitly. Uh, Uh, it will become very clear what the meaning is when I write down the more explicit uh, answer for the ADS3 case. Uh, so in the ADS3 case, ADS3 times F3 times M4, uh, this ORR uh, that enters the VR1 is, uh, uh, I have some notation which I will only sketch very briefly. Um, Let me first write this down. Uh, so these are uh, spin fields um, on uh, M4, part of the CFT, either T4 or K3. Um, and uh, these are uh, spin fields uh, of uh, SO1,5. Uh, so in this, uh, well, if you start with a, a pure NS NS background, uh, we have uh, SL2 times SU2 W0 model n equals one W0 model level k times a superconformal theory with M4 target space, 
Um, this WZM model in involves a bosonic WZM model of shifted weights, and then uh, three free fermions here, three free fermions there. These beam fields are built out, out of the six free fermions of this N equals one WZM models. Um, these Vs are uh, bosonic uh, current algebra primaries of SL2 at level k plus 2 and SU2 at level k minus 2, respectively. Uh, these J and J prime are the SL2 and SU2 spin. Due to lack of time, I don't have the time to review all this notation, but this, these are standard. Um, so this is, these are both in the fundamental representation. This J equals minus half is usually would be called an uh, non-normalizable vertex operator, but it's appropriate one for this deformation. So then one can actually solve what, uh, for this uh, leading component of the second order string field, uh, and uh, let me write that down, uh, because it will reveal already a lot of uh, information. So now we have this vertex operator in the adjoint representation. Uh, but there's some coefficient, r to the minus 4 over k, r to the plus 4 over k, where this r is a rg scale uh, that uh, enters in the choice of the section of the string vertex um, in the string field uh, bracket. So, so, so in that case, you know, the, the, I have to choose uh, sort of the size of the disk around each of these vertex operators, or part of the data of the local coordinate system in the, defining the, the string field bracket, uh, the, 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 the radius of the disk, is, like, I'll call it R, that enters this leading term here. And then there are many more complicated stuff in this higher weight part, which I'm not writing. This is something like the stop line? Uh, it's like what? The length of the stop? Of the uh, the, uh, yes, yes, yes. It, it can be thought of. Uh, uh, the, the R is a parameter that goes goes into the uh, goes into characterizing where the section is in the fiber. Okay, there's an infinite dimensional space I'm, I'm suppressing, and that in particular contains this parameter R that uh, that labels the size of the, the, the choice of the size of the disks uh, that will enter here. Um, uh, you know, in fact, these, uh, these these powers are actually due to the fact that these operators are already off shell. In fact, they have a um, they're off shell by the, the weight. Uh, 4 over k. So in the limit when k goes to infinity, this will become unshell again. And in the limit of k goes to infinity, this thing, in fact, becomes proportional to the Lagrangian density of the WZW model. So k is the limit of the WZW model. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, remember, I'm starting at the pure NSNS point, where you have WZW model. Um, so in the, in the limit k goes, k goes to infinity, this thing, this R will drop out, because in k goes to infinity, this becomes 1. Um, and this thing will be proportional to the Lagrange density of WZM model, so it wants to change the radius. But, you know, you, you cannot change, the radius deformation of the WZM model is not a marginal deformation. So, so, this, is, so, so, so this is the, the appropriate off shell version of that. Right. Um, okay, so uh, now you can study the... Uh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, it doesn't disappear. It becomes. Uh, so, uh, due to lack of time, I'm not going to discuss in detail of the analysis of linearized fluctuation. Um, uh, but I'll just tell you the the upshot of of, of that. So there's. Uh, um, elaborate story, in fact, about what it means to, to correct the mass spectrum of the strings in a string field, uh, field um, uh, in this formalism, because uh, the, 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 the point is that you know, the, the, the linearized fluctuation will contain some, something that you recognize as um, uh, some kind of unshell like thing, but when, when you, in this context, uh, you know, you'll find that uh, you have to kind of shift the dispersion relation of the uh, of the you know, in some appropriate way, and you have to kind of carefully define what it means by renormalizing the, the mass from the point of the stream field. So I don't have time to discuss that in detail. I'll, I'll just say that at the end of the day, um, you'll find that the uh, correction to the mass squared uh, to a second order in mu um, out of the, this linearized fluctuation analysis uh, is actually uh, going to be computed by this uh, uh, amplitude uh, which is a per a per r offshore amplitude, but in this case it actually becomes it happens to be uh, essentially equivalent to onshore amplitude in some sense. 
Um, uh, uh, let me write like this. Uh, uh, where we have this VR1 insertions. Uh, so, uh, anyway, uh, because there's a, there's a lack of time, I have to be a little, a little sketchy here. The, the point is that. Uh, 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 no, 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 uh, K is finite. K, can, I can take it to be five uh, or 17 if I wish. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm turning on the Ramon Ramon flux, which is described by the coefficient of this deformation. Yeah. So, so take K equals 17 for the rest of the discussion. Uh, yeah, they, they are real. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're, we're talking about free string theory here. We're talking about free string theory. Yeah, everything is tree level. Yeah, I mean, the, the deformation of the dispersion relation due to the change of the background. But that's the question we're studying. Everything is classical. Uh, sorry, this is the space time momentum. Sorry, maybe that was a good thing that, 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 that can confuse you. So, sorry. Uh, I, uh, there's just some generic statement that I'm saying that when, when you change the background, you have to define what you mean by changing the mass. And uh, this is, should be defined by uh, appropriate change of dispersion relation. I didn't even tell you what, what I mean by the mass squared. Uh, but it's the appropriate thing for the, uh, for, for, for the, for the state in, in ADS3. Okay. Um, um, okay, so uh, the, the, the upshot of this, this uh, uh, so at the end of the day, uh, if you do this linearized uh, fluctuation analysis, you'll find that uh, the mass squared is some uh, integral of some uh, simple uh, factor, uh, due to ghosts, times an untrivial correlator in the mat matter CFT uh, of uh, some v bar, let's see, v zero, and uh, OR, uh, this ORR at one, and O R R at uh, Z Z Z bar. Uh, one of them, I use this notation for the picture raised version. So, so this picture raised, this this one in the minus a half picture, minus, minus a half, minus a half, um, and the, the, this picture raised version in the plus a half, uh, plus half picture. Uh, so this is what you would you know naively uh, want to want to compute. But the point is that here it, it, we don't have to in, invent any new machinery, and it follows from. Uh, from the string field analysis. Now, now um, m most of the work of the actual paper goes into computing this correlate and, and integrate it. So this we do numerically. Um, uh, it's, um, so uh, maybe I'll just write this down quickly for, to just know what we're talking about. Uh, we'll be talking about this matter vertex operator of the form. Uh, these are free fermions in the SL2 supersymmetric W0 model. There's some uh, current algebra. This is the bosonic currents. Uh, VSL, so some spin. J and uh, the MM bar quantum number also J and V S U J prime J prime J prime and then some M4 vertex operator. Um, so there's some mass shell condition uh, that would dictate a relation between J and J prime. This was the vertex operator uh, you would write for a, a, a pulsating short string in ADS3 at the double field point. Um, the, the claim is that uh, there's a corresponding linearized fluctuation string field in this deformed background, and if you calculate the order mu squared correction to its mass squared, it'll take this form, uh, where this calculation can done, you, can, you can do in the original W0 model. Um, and this computation is something that you can hand over to a graduate student, uh, uh, and, uh, and some, some months later they'll tell you the answer, um, by uh, some tedious straightforward exercises of uh, current algebra conformal blocks and uh, word identities. Um, eventually, the integral has to be, this involved a bunch of uh, hybrid geometric functions. The integral was eventually done numerically. Um, by the way, supersymmetry is actually not manifesting in this computation, but we check numerically that supersymmetry is a bait in that if you take n to be zero, it's a BPS operator, the, the correction to the mass is actually zero numerically. Um, and uh, so then one, one can make some uh, plot uh, of the correction. Uh, no, that, that, that would, would have dropped out. Uh, that's the thing I didn't have time to, to explain. Uh, that come from, uh, follow from this uh, uh, fluctuation analysis. Uh, and also, I, I should uh, mention... Uh, 
Uh, co correct. Co uh, co correct. Uh, uh, and in fact, there's, a, there's another thing you might have complained about, which is that the, the, here, naively, there'll be some divergences. The diversion of the power form, uh, but actually there's no divergence in the string field theory. So, uh, so one can show that the string field theory nat naturally leads to this answer where you have already subtracted the power divergences. So I didn't discuss why that's the case, but, but it's, a, it's a standard thing. Uh, oh, uh, the, 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 the thing I, I skipped is the actual analysis of linearized equation motion. This follows from that. Uh, so, so that's the thing I didn't have time to, to discuss. Uh, so I'm saying, yeah, this is, I want to emphasize that I'm not inventing any new formalism. This follows from the string field theory prescription. Um, uh, so, um, uh, so you can uh, compute this, uh, you know, this n is basically the oscillator number. It's like uh, if you have, uh, if you do the semi-classical bohr sommerfeld quantization uh, of this oscillating string, n is, so if you integrate the, the area in the, in the phase space of the orbit, enclosed by the orbit in phase space, uh, the n is that, uh, uh, that, that's the, the, that quantum number. Um, so uh, take n to be one, two, three, and so forth, you, you'll find some numerical answer. And then you have, you'll find some semi-classical answer looks like this, where you get this by, by doing the semi-classical quantization of, of this oscillating string in, in, in the phase space. Um, so um, uh, now a very non-trivial check that we can do uh, is that we can simply numerically compute this for a large set of values of k and take the appropriate large k and a large little n uh, limit where this becomes a semi classic Austin string and the result matches nicely with the result you would directly obtain by the bohr summer for, for quantization just based on Nambugoto action plus the coupling to B field. Um, and uh, it also numerically one can check that it matches with the uh, known exact answer in the PP wave limit um, which can be obtained from other formalisms. Um, but as far as I know, for finite k ADS, uh, this is so far the only formalism that even allow you to compute explicitly the leading non-trivial correction to the string spectrum at finite, at, at finite k. So uh, I, I should stop here. I'm already over time. I just want to uh, 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 summarize by, by saying that uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, uh, natural follow-up questions. Uh, for example, uh, here we did only a kind of uh, analysis of some uh, uh, some special case of this pulsating string only for the reason of the simplicity of the formula vertex operator. Uh, but actually from the point of view of how you actually organize your thinking of the string spectrum, this is not the easiest say to consider. Uh, what we'd like to connect this to is the picture of magnons leaving on strings and their scattering uh, in trying to connect to this integra integrability story. Uh, and we're cu currently thinking about that because we think that in fact the string field theory method would potentially allow us to compute things like the dressing factor of the magnon S matrix without having to make any guesses, at least to leading order, uh, leading non-trivial order in the wrong run flux. Um, there's the question of the long strings, which I didn't have the time to, to discuss. Uh, they presumably can be done with a similar calculation, but a little more sophisticated for reasons I can explain privately. Uh, and then um, the, the full power of the string field theory should really be for the higher order deformation where this becomes very confusing. It's not quite clear how to regulate this going to higher order, uh, but that remains to be, remains to be seen. Uh, uh, stop here. Thank you. Yes. Uh, 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 not quite. Uh, okay. So, uh, for, for, uh, first of all, uh, it, uh, sorry. Uh, what did you, I mean, if, if you just take the take the OP, first of all, it will not obey these uh, uh, string field uh, constraints. Uh, so, which says, for example, you have to restrict the spin zero uh, uh, state. And I think, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you, you can you can try you can try to do that. Um, uh, so, in fact, there will be, uh, there, there, there's some choice of this uh, section, this, uh, this S, uh, in the case of the three-point uh, string bracket or three-point offshore amplitude, where it basically looks like the OPE. Uh, but, but, of course, uh, it's, uh, you have to be careful in kind of uh, solving this, this equation. Um, now, uh, if, uh, um, if the state here has some, uh, if it has, uh, uh, for the component with non-zero L0 eigenvalue, uh, it's straightforward to, to invert it by acting with the propagator, sort of B0. Uh, on each individual one, yes, but not for this, uh, this, this bracket. Okay, so, so generally, this, in fact, in this case, explicitly actually turned out to have no L0 equals 0 components. It's entirely off-shell. Uh, in fact, 
uh, as illustrated in, in, in this example, this is one of the components of this. This is the lowest weight component of this VNS2. So you can check explicitly that that, that is obeyed, and this, this R will, will will come in to you know it, it come from this. Uh, uh, you know well, the thing is when 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 you, when you take this OP, you have to roughly speaking you know you you, you have to you have to make some choice of conformal frame in order to uh, to to define to define this uh, in an unambiguous way because a, a priori the, the the stuff in the OPE will be look will look like some off shell uh, vertex operator. Um, yeah, so so I I think to 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 make all of that precise. Does require this language. So, so, so the dependence uh, on, on this R and on this choice of these uh, local coordinate uh, patches, uh, this VNS2, so that somehow miraculously disappeared? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Um, so I, I can say, uh, uh, you know, I didn't have time to, to say this, but I can say well, why it disappears. So uh, at this order, um, so you solve this equation for the fl linearized fluctuation, which schematically looks like this, where this. Okay, it's something that involves the, the background. Um, so you, you try to solve this equation, and and, and it looks like this. So at, at first order, um, it, it, you can think of this as, a, as kind of a diagram. So at the zeroth order, you have um, this is basically this uh, this matter vertex operator dressed by the appropriate ghosts. I'm not writing, and, and then you insert this v r one, and out comes. Then you insert some as you you put in some propagator that out comes the uh, the the first order. Uh, social fluctuation, but for uh, the case of intro, we need to study the fluctuation, and, uh, the second order correction to a fluctuation, which will give us the dispersion relation and order mu squared. Um, so that uh, will involve uh, kind of diagrams like like this, uh, because you have to iterate this again. Um, there will be some uh, diagram like this uh, that involves this VNS2 insertion. This is the thing Hiroshi was, was asking. This indeed would a priori appear, and then there's a kind of a Quartic vertex. This should be sort of this one pi version of it, uh, like, like so. That would appear in in, in this uh, in this k, um, uh, with some appropriate combinatoric factor one half, uh, so that the, these things actually combine into this um, uh, offshore amplitude, into this offshore amplitude, right? So each individual piece would have explicit R dependence, but that dependence will cancel in this uh, in this amplitude, which happens to to be, and the reason for that is because these things are actually on in this example. Uh, so so, so that, that's why the R dependence cancel out. Um, yeah, so, so at the end of the day, the computation is something you could have guessed. In fact, we did guess this before we knew anything about string field theory. Um, but the logic behind it really comes from string field theory. And I think in order to extend this more generally, you do need to use the language of string field theory. Uh, uh, the pigeon operator uh, has to be inserted pr appropriately, and in general, if the string fields are off shell, uh, indeed, this answer will depend on the pigeon where, where, you, where you place them. You have to decide, decide how you place them over the modular space. But in this example, it just happens that at this, to the order of computing, uh, these four things are explicitly on shell because this one was the original matter vertex operator in the W0 model. And, and, and uh, yeah, so, so, so this computation, uh, once you throw away the power divergences, is explicitly independent of choice of the patient operator, which is why I can, uh, yeah, th th that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Um, yeah, uh, I, I should say that, in fact, uh, in our paper, we also studied uh, uh, what you might think is a simpler example, which is the PP wave. Um, but actually, uh, if we view the PP wave as a, say, say ADS5 times S5 PP wave limit, if you view the five form PP wave, is a deformation of flat space. We can also try to do it in this formalism, but it's actually much, much more subtle than this uh, ADS3 case, um, mostly because you're doing a drastic, kind of a large deformation of, not large, but a, a, a more drastic deformation of, of the background. And uh, a lot of these uh, subtleties really come in. And in that case, you really have to use the string field formalism. Uh, otherwise, these things become very confusing. Well, this is similar to a coincidence in the case of four Yes, yes, it's a coincidence here. If you, if you try to do, play the same game for deforming flat space to even to P wave, in, in that case, uh, the, the, this will have some problems. Um, yeah. So this original proposal by Berenstein, to be modified? You know, I, I, think, I think it's just, uh, um, uh, it, it's, it, it's morally correct, but, but, uh, but there are various regularization details that are, that has to be understood better, uh, and I don't fully understand that uh, in, in to general order. No. 